Oh, you're just in time. I was about to press, I don't know, just one or two buttons. This is the best thing ever to happen to Diablo 4. Hello, my fellow sorcerers. Welcome one, welcome all to this new Frozen Orb with the new Fractured Winter Glass unique in all its glory. I don't want to go too crazy on the PTR in builds because a lot will change and there's so much I want to explore in Season 4 proper, but don't get me wrong, I've been doing a lot of testing and experimenting behind the scenes and the one build I cannot resist at least presenting to you guys because A, it's probably the one you're most curious about and B, it's absolutely, and you guys know I don't say this often, Naughty Cuckoo Bananas. This unique is brilliant. The fact that every frozen orb can summon a conjuration and it's 50% rate, which is really healthy, and then you've got an up to 100% lucky hit chance for said conjuration to launch a frozen orb, which then has a 50% chance to do another conjuration. That infinite feedback loop is delicious. And depending on where you push it, either full lucky hit or you just go for the raw damage and you don't need the chain to last for too long, in either case, the results are ridiculous. Not to mention all the other ways you can take this build too. I'm very excited to share with you my current thoughts on it, which I uh, do believe to be, I mean, really up there. I've seen so many quirky little versions that are also just wonderful in their own right. Like, if we go to a tier 100, it effortlessly walks through it, no problems, no questions asked. If we pop over to Uber Lilith, it effortlessly annihilates her, no problems, no questions asked. And of course, as I've been grinding through the pit, it's kind of made it a little bit anticlimactic, though that said, the pit itself is a lot of fun and something Diablo 4 has desperately needed. Now, obviously, Uber Lilith tier 100 was the old sort of ceiling. We now have the pit all the way up to tier 200 and Frozen Hob as comfortably annihilated that too and then we have the new level 200 torment bosses and you guessed it yeah it's absolutely rocking there as well but the thing is i don't want to focus too much on the raw numbers because again it's ptr there will probably be tweaks like there is no way that barbarian dust devil doesn't get toned down a little bit because that's equally as insane but the point remains that functionally mechanically this build is so satisfying to play and is going to be the, or at least one of the most powerful sorcerer builds in Season 4 unless they just randomly annihilate it, which they're not going to do because it's the new shiny unique and that would be a ridiculous decision. And Blizzard never make ridiculous decisions, right? <laughs> I'm in danger! But in any case, all of this should be contextualized by, of course, this is the PTR, so grinding perfect gear and everything is sort of a huge waste of time. So, look, this build doesn't even have every unique it should have. It's not got all of the correct tempering. Some items don't even have tempering yet. Veiled crystals are a serious problem, even with creating more characters to combat it. It doesn't even have master working on any item other than the actual fractured wind to glass and that's only up to level 4. The power ceiling of this with everything perfect and upgraded like it will get to in season 4 proper next month is unreal. So without further ado, well, let's go through it. So before we get into skill trees, which would be the usual stat here, I think actually going over what's made this possible is kind of important. The first one is simply the changes to Frozen Orb. The buff to this being a 45% multiplicative while healthy is a ridiculous damage increase, but mechanically, it going to where you fire it, so if I target 
navigate bottom left, it will actually fully go to the bottom left, whereas if I target right in front of me, it will stop right in front of me, so you can choose to actually have each frozen orb exactly where you need it to be at any distance. This makes this incredibly versatile, because no matter where the pack of enemies are, you can just walk along and go, there's enemies there, okay, there's enemies down there, oh, there's some enemies over there, oh, there's enemies distantly over there, okay, that's fine, oh, there's some in this corner, okay, they've got one, that corner over there, and it just lets you so specifically target everything, so you don't have to run over to every enemy, you don't have to really think about every enemy specifically, and it makes a huge difference to how it flows. Past that, obviously, the actual unique itself. Because your conjurations, which are being conjurated by your frozen orb, will then make more frozen orbs, you have this situation where, say I'm just fighting enemies over in this corner of the room, and I launch my lightning spear, and now it's flown up over here to start attacking these guys, the lightning spear will summon its own frozen orbs on them, which will then summon more conjurations, which will then summon more frozen orbs. Or if I I have my ice blades over there while I'm dealing with enemies down here, it's now just kind of automatically killing everyone over here. And then it will automatically fly over here with the lightning spear and start killing everything over here with frozen orbs. So while, you know, thematically frozen orbs and conjurations don't really have anything to do with each other, so it's a bit weird, the fact that they are tied like this means that you will often see lightning spears and ice blades going over to packs of enemies in the next room that you're not even aware of yet, start attacking them, summon frozen orbs, which starts the chain of summoning each other all over again, so it's so good for speed clearing because it just kind of automatically propagates through a dungeon or whatever it is that you're doing. You see how I didn't even go anywhere near them, I just summoned the conjurations and off they go. And then when you get to boss damage, because we have uh, the aspect of Frozen Orbit that makes it stay there and pulse more times, we just get into this situation where we just start stacking them on top of each other and the damage ramps up and up and up, on top of uh, the conjurations themselves also creating more. So we just end up having, you see, just this pulse, 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 pulse of frost that just gets more more and more damaging the more it goes along, and that is absolutely phenomenal. It looks brilliant too. And then past that, we have, uh, well, the change to Conjuration Mastery. Not just more damage, but movement speed, which is excellent, because that also ties into S's Mastery Crit Chance, but Mana Regen. So this build almost solves its own mana problems, because the more Frozen Orbs, the more Conjurations, the more mana. Like, look how many stacks of this we get when we fight a group of enemies. It's actually kind of ridiculous. We're up to 6, 7, 9, 10, 12, 14, and 15. You will 16. You will hover around that just permanently. At 15 stacks, I mean, you're up there at 120% mana regen. So you slap on a little bit of extra resource generation from your tempering, and you are off to the races. So there really has been a number of changes that just really beautifully synergize to make this so, so much better than it ever could have been even before the changes on the PTR. If they had just put this unique and done nothing else into Season 3, it would be nowhere as good as it's actually turned out to be. So with that all kind of said, let's get into this. I don't plan on going through through as much detail as usual, because again, it's PTR, things will change, I will do a full-on proper perfect version of this in Season 4, of course I will, and no doubt will iterate on it too, as as I said, there's so many ways to play this, and all of them are so good. In any case, then, we want our usual two points in Firebolt, because yes, we will be playing Burning Synergy, as there really isn't a good use for your second enchantment slot here. You could argue that, actually, Frost Nova is, so your Conjurations are also freezing everything, and incredibly hard content, you know, your tier 200 pits, that might be the way to go, but generally speaking, yeah, your extra Firebolts to get your Devouring Blaze and your Burning Paragon board is where it is, some things it seems will never change. Then you get your full Frozen Orb complement alongside Enhanced and Greater, and this becomes, of course, your other enchantment.
equipment. Having that 30% chance when you press anything to fire out more auto enemy targeting frozen orbs that then start the conjuration frozen orb chain is just too good. Technically, you could argue maybe you don't need this many frozen orbs, but I think that's a hard argument to make, especially as you are pressing all of these so much because, well, you are getting so much cooldown reduction from having so many ice blades out, and obviously you're just spamming frozen orb anyway, so each frozen orb having a 30% chance to double cast is just double the amount of conjurations, double the chain of death. Then we get ourselves the buffed elemental dominance for 12% to multiplicative damage now and move on to your defensives where we actually don't really care about the fire shields as it currently stands the new mystical is just fine but it's wasted points here and then we get teleport with uh, the movement speed up which is quite nice get your glass cannon your attunement for resets and then new ice armor where we can have it reduce and cool down from spending mana we're spending mana a lot because we don't want frozen orb with avalanche it's just not worth it, we have enough mana, so you'll often find that Ice Armor comes off cooldown before it's even finished, which is kind of a recipe of immortality, which is why this is so tanky too. We get ourselves a line with Mana Shield, it's nice to just have that permanently up, but we only put one in protection because we do want to save points, and because of kind of the permanent Ice Armor, thanks to Shimmering, we don't need to go all out, we just put the one point just to help barrier uptime for barrier aspect synergies. Then full lucky hit, because lucky hit plays into the amulet of course and then the two conjurations of choice we don't get hydra because we don't want to spend time casting it constantly keeping it up it costs mana every time you hydra that's a frozen orb you've not done whereas these two just cooldowns that you press every 16 and 13 seconds yeah that is great get your summon so we've got loads of cooldown reduction and then you've got invoked so it's flying around the place stunning everyone and then summoning a frozen orb on top of their face and it's just well lights out out. These two are definites and you want to be able to manually start the Conjuration Frozen Orb chain even without casting Frozen Orb and then the delicious Conjuration Mastery. In Mastery itself, which now also do count as core skills, which is nice, we just want the Devouring Blaze. The full quartet of I'm doing a Frost build and want it to be better is taken and then your key passive is Shatter. We get a lot of freezes very quickly with how much chill Frozen and orb applies and then them popping for more damage is going to do a lot more for you than avalanche will even though the extra damage on the frozen orb itself is good and perhaps for pure bossing this is what you would choose but general pit clearing up to your higher tiers towards 200 shatter's gonna get the job done as enemy health starts to inflate and freezes become a lot more prevalent we also do a lot more damage to frozen enemies and this plays into it so that's kind of where i have landed to start start with for this setup. So when it comes to then the gear that I have gone for, well, let's actually go through it. Of course, you know, fractured winter glass in your next slot, you have to have it, that's all well and good. And hey, it means we don't have to choose which legendary aspect we're going to get 1.5 on the neck. We can just forget about it. Woohoo! Then you want to tell rashes, of course, this is blue rose as a placeholder because I don't have a tell rashes on PTI yet. That's fine, the aspects here are still kind of nice, but yeah, of course, you want your tell rashes. And then you want your Esu's heirloom for your increased critical strike chance and damage. Remember, we're getting loads of movement speed, so currently this bonus is on 4.2%. If I start fighting a little bit to get a load of stacks of Conjuration Mastery, well, suddenly now we're up to 14.2%, which is a really nice amount of crit. Then that's kind of it for required uniques. Your Esus, your Talrashes, and your Fractured. You can run your Raiment, but you don't really need to. This is quite a long-range build. You're not going to be teleporting on top of enemies that much. You will be a little bit, but because we need more defensives, as there's no longer defensive affixes by default, using a chest with a defensive aspect, such as you take less damage when you cast a Conjuration skill, is probably the better way to go. Helmet-wise, 
yeah, you want your Shaco, obviously, eventually. Otherwise, uh, something with a little bit of defensiveness, like Disobedience, or perhaps Juggernaut. And then, technically, uh, you want yourself to Bolt's Will, as that is the best legs for this. So, in the case that you do have to Bolt's Will legs and Shaco on your helmet, then your chest definitely wants to be a defensive aspect instead of raiment. Then, for normal aspects, as I said, you want one defensive one, either Disobedience, Juggernaut, or ever living, or indeed, as I said, the new take less damage after casting a conjuration. And then offensively, we are looking at do more damage with vulnerable while you have a barrier, and then do more damage in general while you have a barrier. We have a barrier a lot now because of new ice armor, so these two are just the natural standard do more damage pairing, and there's nothing else really working too much better. Lastly, then, we are using a staff. This might be a, oh, really? We're giving up the attack speed. Well, the thing is, we can now get just 30% attack speed on the staff real easy, real chill, which is kind of like a very on uber unique levels, and that makes up for it by itself, and then we get to use the double power of having a staff. Because we have uh, the tempering of chance to cast Frozen Orb twice, this means we now have a 30% chance, because it's a staff, to cast it twice. And this is before masterworking it to be a lot higher than that, where we'll start reaching at least over 50% chance to cast a Frozen Orb twice. Which means this, coupled with the enchantment, will just have around a 40% chance per cast to fire three Frozen Orbs at once. That's amazing, but not as amazing as using the staff to get a double power frozen orbit aspect. Because uh, it is what makes this work on top of Fractured Winter Glass, it's what makes the Frozen Orb stay in place and explode. Without it, we uh, simply cannot do that. It just flies and then detonates and then it's done. It cannot be overstated how much worse this is without Frozen Orbit. But more than anything, because it's on a staff and doubled, it now means the extra two pulses do more damage than the initial Frozen Orb itself at 120%. Which is a big deal. I've seen a lot of people miss when it comes to this setup. That is huge, and it is massive for boss and healthy enemy damage, because you just stack all these frozen orbs on their face, pulsing for more damage than their base damage. So yeah, this all really works out. Gem-wise, is it as you see, new just pure vulnerable damage, gems, health, and armor. And then affixes, I'm not going to go into too much. You want a healthy amount of attack speed, crit chance, crit damage, and you are looking good. Lucky hit, health, and ranks of relevant skills is all kind of nice, as is just pure percent damage. This is the kind of stuff we will refine in actual Season 4. But of course, it would be remiss to at least not touch on temporary tempering, as, you know, that's now a huge factor in gear. Although, that said, before we do that, I do want to show you one thing to answer a question you might have. Let's uh, put this Ice Blades out, and if we are lucky, give it a little bit of a watch. It's firing out frozen orbs. Yes, but you see there, it just fired out two at once, because yes, the chance to fire out two frozen orbs from the tempering we're about to go over does apply to the conjurations, launching a frozen orb. Whether that's intended, I'm not sure, but as you can see, yeah, that is quite ludicrous. Here we are then at the new smithy. Masterworking wise, obviously just masterwork everything to the max that you can and hope for the best. You want to get as much conjuration mastery as you can get, and the rest is kind of straightforward. This is just pure upgrading. Tempering, however, where you have to make your choices is much more interesting. On your one non-unique ring, you want resource generation and then just pure damage as I have selected there. On the staff as we've gone over what matters more than anything is getting that frost augment chance to frozen aug twice. It does mean that we can't do Elemental Surge to get Poison or Shadow damage from Mortal Rashes stacks, but the extra Frozen Orbs are more than worth it. Each one is more Conjurations, which is more Frozen Orbs, and ultimately means more damage. Offensively, uh, then, yes, just more damage is always nice to see, at least out of the options presented so far. And, of course, well, Distance actually pretty good with Frozen Orb as well, because you will be doing damage to Distance 
constant enemies a lot and this one ends up being quite the big multiplayer as you can see. The rest of it I will leave you to choose your own, show you what I've gotten so far but I've not really, you know, gone too crazy on it. I really only have one I can choose and I've sort of just accepted the result. Again, PTR, now is not the time to make everything min max super ridiculous perfect just to show you the thinking, the theory crafting, the bones of the build in the way that I've approached it because clearly it's silly effective. So that's a look at those. Lastly then, let's go over Paragon real quick. This is a quick and dirty board I've done for the build, and I realize we've not technically dove too deep into how to play it, but I mean, how to play it is simple. Just throw a single frozen orb on every pack of enemies, and then use all your other abilities on cooldown, especially Ice Blades and Lightning Spear. It's sort of kind of plays itself in that regard. So this is what I am currently working with. I'm not going to go over every point individually, again PTR, but I will certainly show you what's up. In my first board we have Tactician. The extra damage on defensive is really nice and it lasts for ages and we just want to get as much damage as we can as defensively we're really not struggling as Sorcerer, the barrier ridge we've got going for us is never been better. Then we move up to Enchantment Master, and while having a 20% increase on chance to fire extra Frozen Orb is nice, it's not worth the point loss to grab it for this build, as it doesn't really do much for the Firebolt side of things. In any case, so we get the usual triple rare nodes, and the glyph here is Exploit for more vulnerable damage. There is a lot of vulnerable damage in this build. Frozen Orb just makes things vulnerable on top of the Ice Blades and the Lightning Spears going everywhere, so this is the natural choice. Then over into that burning synergy that is your burning instinct and here we find ourselves the usual destruction with the max amount of dexterity taken to power it up and then just a couple points up for kindling as we might as well grab it. The point to damage return is really nice there. Then we head down into the next board which is going to be your icefall. Arranged like this though truthfully I do think I could arrange this one a little bit more efficiently squeeze some more points out. I don't like kind of just randomly going past this life per second. It's a little bit awkward, but in any case, hitting the Cryomancy, the Polar Rhyme, and uh, Frigid alongside Frost is the kind of core four while grabbing Icefall itself, as again, we're doing a lot of frozen damage, and uh, the Glyph here is going to be Control, as everything we're attacking is chilled, except bosses until you stun them, but you will stun bosses very quickly with the amount of CC this applies. Then over to the right where Frigid Fate lies, as you might expect, that extra vulnerable damage is a very big deal, and here our glyph is going to be Flame Feeder for that 10% multiplicative, another of the reasons we do run the Firebolt. That all said and done, we go down to our last board here, and throughout all of this, by the way, the one thing I will say is I've made Saw to go through enough willpower to actually activate Polar Rhyme, to activate Frost, that's something to keep an eye on. In any case, so we go into Conjuration Mastery in Elemental Summoner, and what we're going to put in is Conjurer. Now this one might not be the raw damage choice, though you could certainly argue that it is, and I do. If our Lightning Spears, our Hydras, and our Ice Blades last 20% longer, that means they do 20% more attacks, which is 20% more Frozen Orbs, which is 20% more the Chain of Death happening. And the thing is, the actual damage the Conjurations do isn't too shabby, but this really makes things last a lot longer without needing to go too heavy into Lucky Hit, and I found that it works a lot better than just putting in some raw extra damage here. And then we get Elemental Summoner, again, you might as well, 33% multiplicative on that many conjurations, you do notice, and being able to use your Ice Blades and your Lightning Spear more often is also very nice. So that's kind of how the Paragon board boils down that I am working with. So, with all that said and done, yeah, that is my initial foray exploring testing into a new Frozen Orb Conjuration Fractured Winterglass, and I cannot recommend it enough. I cannot give a more glowing review. It is powerful, it is fun, it is exactly the kind of chaotic ARPG build we want, and hey, it's good to have proper Frozen Orb back, if you know, you know. 
For now then, uh, let me know how you're getting on, PTR, what you're thinking of everything, but I think the general positive reception says a lot. We really are actually going to have Diablo 4 release finally. Isn't that crazy? Like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. <laughs> Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye